since we have came to the schools, or ever since March the 16th. The question has been, what is coronavirus? Now, some of you have explained it as a virus. A virus being that spreads really quick, which means it is contagious, very quick. So, it's a contagious disease that affects people easily. So, before we get into the coronavirus, we should know more about germs. Now, what are germs? Germs are like these very tiny, very little organisms. Organisms, that means they are living creatures. So, they are these very little organisms that we cannot see with our own eyes, right? If we want to see germs or bacteria, what do we need? Yes? A microscope. Good. So, here in this illustration, it's not correct. You cannot use a room to see germs or bacteria or viruses. Now, in here, as you can see, we have a couple of pictures that show that these germs can be found anywhere. They can be on your phones, tablets, your own hands, doorknobs, or the your computer setup, your gaming console, any, any uh, sports equipment, which in here it shows as a basketball, or any other place, which includes walls, it includes windows, trees, pretty much everywhere. However, not all germs are harmful. Not all germs make you sick. There are some germs that your own system can push them away and defend your body against them. What protects our body? We have this system, this defense system. What do we call it? Starts with an I. Yes. Immune system. So our immune system is what protects us against germs and viruses and bacteria. However, our immune system cannot defend us like all the time. Some diseases, some bacteria, some germs can get into our bodies and cause us to get sick. Right? Therefore, we get sick for a short amount of time. Maybe three days, maybe four days, it depends. Okay? Now, there is this new kind of virus, which is called the coronavirus, that is pretty much the reason why everybody is wearing face masks. We don't have two students in one table, we have only one student in each and every table. We have some space between each and every table. Coronavirus is basically the reason. These are all precautions in order to protect ourselves from this disease. Now, coronavirus has another name, which is COVID-19. Can anyone tell me what 19 means? Why do we have the number 19? Why is it called COVID-19? Not COVID-20, not COVID-12, yes? Because uh, they found it uh, in uh, 2019. Very good. So this virus started back in 2019, hence the name 19. If it, the, disease, the disease has started it back in 2012, we would call it COVID-12. If it started in 2015, we would call it COVID-15. So this disease has started back in 2019 in December. Now, coronavirus, just like each and every disease, it has certain signs, let's say, right? Very good. Symptoms. Now these symptoms, they are the ones that allow the doctors to know which disease you have. Is it coronavirus? Is it fever? Is it cold? Right? Now, some of these symptoms are fever, where you have high temperature, as you can see, or coughing, people who cough, that is a sign of coronavirus especially dry cough. Then we have tiredness. Tiredness is when someone is tired all the time. All they want to do is sleep. They have no energy to do pretty much anything. Now these are three symptoms, but they are not the only symptoms. Can anyone tell me what are some of the other symptoms? Yes. Lack of taste. Lack of taste. Very good. Some people or People who get coronavirus, they cannot taste it. Regardless of what the food is, they cannot taste it. What else? Uh, 
So they cannot smell. They cannot smell copper. If you put a can of tuna against their nose, or if you put chocolate or strawberries or whatever, they cannot smell that particular object. Okay? So, lack of smell and lack of taste. What else? Yes? Headaches. Headaches, very good. So, people with coronavirus get some terrible headaches. Their head hurts, and normally, you know, people, if you get a headache, you only take certain medicines, okay? But with coronavirus, those pharmaceuticals are not enough. Another symptom. Diarrhea. Diarrhea, yes. Not all people who have gotten coronavirus have gotten diarrhea, but a lot of them have gotten it. It is a sign of coronavirus, and it is a very bad case of diarrhea. I'm looking for something else, another symptom. Vomit. Vomit, maybe. Now, coronavirus, it attacks, it attacks a certain part of our body. What is it? Right, they are both here. What are they? Yes, lungs. The lungs. It attacks the lungs. So, if it attacks the lungs, the effect would be breathing problems. Breathing problems. Shortness of breath. People who have coronavirus, they have a hard time breathing. That's why you see people, for example, in the hospitals, those who have coronavirus, they give them ventilators. Yeah. Ventilators, right. They are like a mask that they put on, and it's linked to a machine that helps provide them with oxygen to help them breathe. Okay? Now, to keep yourself healthy, the number one thing that you should pay attention to, other than wearing a mask, of course, or wearing one of these, is to wash your hands properly. Now, I emphasize on the word properly. Why? Because some people wash their hands like this. Now, this is not an effective way of washing your hands. Why? Because you have some spaces in your hand that you neglect. So, the proper way would be step number one, to wash your palms, right? Step number two, to wash the space between your fingers. To scrub in there like this with both hands or like this. Step number three would be to scrub the back of the hand. Okay? Number four would be the thumbs. Clean your thumbs just like this. Next up, we have the back of the fingers. Now, for the back of the fingers, there are two techniques that you can use. There is this one, right? For some, this technique might be complicated or a little bit hard. So, you can do it like this. You can scrub the back of your fingers against your palm. Afterwards, we have the nails. Now, for the nails, how to clean the nails is basically you take your nails and you scrub them against your palm as well. Afterwards, we have the wrist. You clean your wrist, and with these eight steps, you have cleaned your entire hand. Okay? You have no hidden germs, no hidden bacteria or viruses on your hand. Now, normally people would only wash their hands like five, six times to seven minutes. But with coronavirus, it should be way more, at least 20 times a day. At least. And when you're washing your hands, you should at least spend 20 seconds washing your hands. Most doctors, they recommend 40 seconds. Spends, you spend it in washing your hands, okay? Now, next part is washing your, when you have to wash your hands. Now, normally, you should wash your hands after you cough, after you sneeze, after you blow your nose, blow your nose, you have know, runny nose, and you have liquid like booger coming out of your nose, that's a sign, that's a symptom of the coronavirus as well, okay? After blowing your nose with a tissue, of course, you should not blow your nose with your own hand. And after using the bathroom. The most important thing is before you eat. Now your mouth is basically the welcome, welcoming door to all germs that you get into your body. So you should be washing your hands every time you would like to eat some. Either if it's a meal or if it's a snack. Okay? Just like now, you are in a classroom, 
You will not have water. You will not have soap. So, you cannot wash your hands using water and soap. That is why we have hand sanitizers. Hand sanitizers, they come in two different forms. We have the spray that you can spray just like a cologne or just like a perfume. And there is also the gel. Okay? The steps of washing your hands using a hand sanitizer are the same steps of washing your hands using water and soap. Now, germs, if somebody is infected, how do they come out? They come out in three different ways. First one, as you can see, is coughing. Second one is sneezing. Now, what's the third one? You know what sweat is? Yes. Right. Now, if you play sports after five minutes, you have this, this liquid, kind of like water, coming out of your body. That is sweat. Now, if you rub your fingers together, you will see that they are moist. That is sweat. So, for example, if someone has coronavirus and he touches a certain surface or an object, he has transmitted that virus to that particular object or surface. So, you should always watch where you put your hands, what you touch, and always clean your hands, either with water and soap. If it's not available, use hand sanitizer. Now, for the way to cough and sneeze, even if you wear a mask, you should always cough and sneeze in, in your elbow, in the sleeve of your elbow, to keep everybody around you safe, and to limit the projectiles coming out of your mouth. This is basically what you should bring to school. Hand sanitizer is either a spray or a gel, a face mask, which all of you already have, and tissues. Tissues can be used for multiple things. It's not just to blow your nose. It's also to pick up maybe an object that is not yours, you want to get rid of it, Maybe if you want to clean the surface, like for example the table, before you sit in it. Or if you would like to dry your hands after you wash them. So tissues are very, you, they can be utilized for multiple things. Now, hand sanitizers, I can see that all students have. That's pretty good. You use them all the time. That's also really good. However, hand sanitizers, if they are mixed with water, they are not effective in room. Hand sanitizer should be 70% alcohol. 70%. If it's less, for example, if I have corona on my hands and I wash them using a hand sanitizer that is less than 70% alcohol, the virus is still on my hands. One other thing about the hand sanitizers is that they are not really good for your skin. They cause your skin to become dry and sometimes even ashy. So, at night, I would advise you to put on some cream on your hands because using the hand sanitizer too much can damage the skin. At night, use a cream on your hands in order to protect your skin and keep it soft and fresh. Now for the social distance. When you come into school, you have not seen your friends ever since March, right? March the 16th. That's when the quarantine has started. You want to hug your friends, you want to high-five them, you want to shake their hands, but that's not possible. How to greet your friends? The optimal way would be to say hello from a distance. You can say it with your mouth or you can wave hi. But that's about it. If you really have to touch your friend, use your foot, just like in the picture, okay? No handshakes, no knuckles, no high fives, and definitely no hugs, okay? To keep yourself safe and keep your family safe, and also keep your friend that you want to hug also safe. Now, ever since the quarantine, ever since the 16th of March, a lot of places have closed down. Can you give me examples of the places that have closed down in our situation? Museums. Schools. What places have closed down? 
Fast food chains, that means restaurants. Okay. Cafes. Mosques have closing, right? Pretty much every place where people can gather have closed down, even the parks and even the beach. Why is that? All of this is just to protect you and protect the entire population. Because if one person is infected and he gathers around with another group of people in a crowded place, everybody's going to become infected. So, to make sure that everybody's safe and healthy, many places for the public have been closed down. Now, since the 16th of March, each and every one of you have been just staying at home, feeling like he, he or she are trapped. And that can cause a certain feeling of solitude, right? Loneliness. So, there are certain ways that you can have fun, which does not include the PS4 and Fortnite. There are other ways in which you can have fun, like for example, making art. And here in this school, you have studied art for multiple times. So, you can make art either by painting, or by drawing, or by making sculptures, or by using colors, paper, and a scissor, and glue, and making interesting shapes. Or, you can read books. In my opinion, books are way better than movies or series. Why? Because when you watch a movie or a series, you are watching it through the eyes of the director. It's his imagination. He has read the scene, right? Movies and series are basically just books. He reads them, he envisions the scene, and that is what you see. So, it would be better if you read it for yourself, without having limitations of a certain budget for each and every scene, and you could imagine the movie or the series your own way. Yes? I'm doing sports. Right, doing sports, you also miss it. Also, gyms have been closed. Now, for games, not all games are video games. There are certain games that you can play with your siblings, either brothers or sisters, or if you have a best friend that you have been seeing. It would be better if you play real games, real life games, with them. Like, for example, you can play Monopoly. Yeah. You know Monopoly? Yeah. Right, you can play Scrabble. You can play chess. You can play card games. Yes. Yeah. Right, chess. Chess is very strategic and it develops your intelligence and puts up a couple of points on your IQ. Now, if you feel sick before coming to school, it is better if you just stay home. Don't come to school, take a day off, relax, sleep, or if you feel really sick, go and see a doctor. Now, before you come into school, there are certain personnel that you always see at the door of our school. Who do they They check your temperature. So, it is better that you check your temperature at home before coming in. Because if you have high temperature, they are not going to allow you into the school. So, measure your temperature at home before coming in here. That way, if you had high temperature, you would save yourself a trip back home. Okay?